greetings to you on this tremendous season of great rejoicing. Some call it the silly season, but I prefer to call it the sacred season. You know, it's interesting that the seed that God talked to the devil about in the Garden of Eden, where he said to Satan, he said, I will send a seed and this seed will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. And eventually, 2000 years ago now, that seed came to fruition and Jesus Christ was born. And it's at the arrival of Jesus Christ, we see the seed of God coming to us. We see the Son of God coming to us. We see the perfect Lamb of God coming to us to take away our sins. We see the Redeemer and the Savior being born in Bethlehem. And we see the good news for the entire world being brought to earth. And that is so exciting. And we read from Isaiah and Isaiah 7:14 says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall, con shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. And that was spoken some 600 years before Jesus came onto the earth. And it's interesting that when Jesus arrived, uh, the people, the Israelites had no idea how their God looked because they were not allowed to make any image of God. They had no concept of their God, except what they saw and what they heard from the prophets that they had in those days. And it's interesting to me that when Jesus was born, God was no longer just someone that people had individually pictured him to be, but they saw in him what God looked like. They listened to what God sounded like and they saw in his actions the love of God. And um, when he came to earth and he was followed, it's interesting to know that from the first time since God walked with Adam and Eve in the, in the Garden of Eden, God walked with mankind, the pinnacle of his creation. For the first time since the Garden of Eden, Jesus came and walked with his creation on earth. And it is fascinating to know that when Philip saw Jesus, he said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said to him, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And you've seen who the Father looks like. You've seen how the Father talks. You've seen what the Father does. If you look at me, you will see the Father. And in 1 John 4, 8, we, we read that God is love. And when Emmanuel came down in the form of Jesus, the Son of God, it wasn't just God with us because God is love. So we could actually say it was love with us. And this throws a slightly different perspective on the whole thing. Because if God is love, Jesus told us in his one new commandment, as I have loved you, so you must go and love one another. By this love will everyone know that you are my disciples. So Jesus gave us that commandment to go and love. And in this season of great joy and celebration, we need to know that we should go out and love others in the same way that Jesus loved us and God loves us unconditionally and sacrificially. And let's reflect, reflect that love by intentionally loving those around us. And you know, it's very interesting to note that the measure of our love for the Father and for God is not measured by which church we go to. The measure of our love for God is not measured by how many times we go to church. And the love of God is not in our lives is not measured by our knowledge of the Word. But the Apostle John tells us that our love is measured by how we love those around us. And this season, I'm challenging all of us, myself in particular, to go out there and have Emmanuel with us. And although Jesus is not with us, he sent the Holy Spirit who is God. So the person of the Holy Spirit lives in each and every one of the believers. And I believe that this is Emmanuel in us. Emmanuel first came in the form of Jesus, God with us, but when Jesus went, he sent the Holy Spirit. So we can quite rightly say that Emmanuel is with us. 
And it's not just God with us, it's love that is with us because God is love. So I would urge all of us this season to go out and to love those around us unconditionally and sacrificially. And let's, la- let's have a love fest this season and let's just love abundantly those who are around us, extravagantly to those who are around us. And let's carry this love motive through into 2024. Let's make this a platform for loving those around us as we go into 2024. So my prayer for you is that you have a wonderful season of love. Emmanuel, God with you as a believer, God with us as believers. And that people, when they see us, they would see the love of God. They would see Emmanuel. They would see God in each one of us. And it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. So my challenge to all of us this season is not only to have a wonderful season with family and with friends and just celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But my challenge to us is let's love. Let's have Emmanuel come to the fore not just God with us, but love with us. Let him come to the fore this season and let's lay a foundation for the next year that we can go into 2024 loving others. So from us to you, may God richly bless you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful season. And I just pray that you continue to bear much fruit for the kingdom during this season. Amen.